again. Thank you, Glenn. We've already finished the part where we spoke about the Our Father, and uh, by now, it's something that we will grow over time, and it's not something that you can grasp so easily or develop uh, that kind of a relation with the Father very easily. It's something that we have to practice daily in our personal prayer time and developing the relation with our Father and with His children when we say Our Father. The second part that we're going to go on today uh, is going to be the part we say Our Father who art in heaven. So what do you understand by who art in heaven? Uh, because, you know, even scripture says that, uh, okay, first and foremost, what is your understanding of art in, uh, who art in heaven? What does it mean when you say, oh, Father, who art in heaven? I've what? graduated a little, Glenn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, earlier, you know, heaven was like a place up there and, you know, this is earth and hell below. But uh, my understanding now of heaven is wherever God is present, that uh, place, that dwelling place is heaven. Mm. So if you're in the presence of God always, mm. you're in heaven. Correct. So what are you saying is right. So now sacred scripture will say that uh, heaven is like, uh, for example, Psalm 11 verses 4 will say, Yahweh is in his holy temple. Yahweh, his throne is in heaven. His eyes watch over his world. His gaze scrutinizes the children of Abraham. Then Psalm 19 says, heavens declare the glory of God. So you, you see God's dwelling place is heaven. Again, um, 2 Chronicles 2 verses 6, uh, who, who would not find it an impossible task to build a house for him when the heavens and the heavens of the heavens cannot contain him? <laughs> so this is uh, what, yeah. Psalm, uh, what 2 Chronicles says. Yahweh, uh, Isaiah 66 verses 1 to 2 says, Yahweh says, heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. What house could you build me? True. Uh, Revelation 11 verses 19 the sanctuary of God in heaven open and the ark of the covenant could be seen so you see heaven is where God dwells, dwells. first and foremost we have to understand that heaven is where where God is heaven is there that is his dwelling, dwelling place now it's very important to understand when we say who art in heaven now the thing is okay let me see what uh, let's go directly into the catechism of the Catholic Church um, the biblical 2794 will say the biblical expression does not mean a place, but it's a space. Uh, not a place or a space state. as you said, but it's a state or a way of being. It does not mean that God is distant but majestic. Our Father is not elsewhere. He transcends everything we can conceive of His holiness. It is precisely because He is thrice holy that He is so close to the humble and contrite heart. Remember, and where God is, there is heaven. If God is within us, that means heaven is. Then we remember this heaven, song, is, in my heaven heart. is in my heart. So it's true. So uh, even the, uh, the Catechism continues to say, "Our Father who art in heaven is rightly understood to mean that God is in the hearts of the just, as is as in His holy temple. At the same time, it it means that those who pray should desire the one they should invoke to dwell in them. Heaven could also be uh, those who bear the image of the heavenly world." by whom God dwells and tarries. So this is a quotation that was taken by, uh, given by Saint Cyril of Jerusalem, that heaven could be those who bear the image of the heavenly world and whom God dwells and tarries. 2795 will say, the symbol of heaven refers us back to the mystery of the covenant we are living when we pray to our Father. He is in heaven, his dwelling place, the Father's house is our homeland. Sin has exiled us from the land of the covenant. We know that when, when Adam and Eve sinned, it exiled them from that land of that covenant. Yes. But conversion of heart enables us to return to the Father in heaven. For So in Christ, then heaven and earth are reconciled. So both heaven and earth get reconciled to each other. For the Son alone descended from heaven, Jesus descended from heaven, and he causes us to ascend there with him by his cross, resurrection and ascension. And that's exactly what we, uh, when we learn the book of Ephesians, we say that we died with him, we raised up with him, and now we are seated with him in the heavenly the places. Heavenly so, uh, which means that we are seated with him in the heavens. So, we are in the heavens with him. Why? Because where God is, there is there is where heaven is, right? So, if we are with Christ, that means we are in the heavens. It's only a matter of time that when we will be revealed to his glory, when, when the day when we pass away. So, paragraph 2796 says, When the church prays, Our Father who art in heaven, she is professing that we are the people of God, already seated with him in the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, and hidden with Christ in God. Yet, at the same time, here indeed we groan and long to put on our heavenly dwelling. It's a quotation taken from uh, 2 Corinthians 5 verses 2, 
Philippians 3 verses 20 and Hebrews 13 verses 14. So, uh, uh, paragraph, so it continues to say, Christians are in the flesh, but do not live according to the flesh. They spend their lives on earth, but are citizens of heaven. So what it simply means that we have to understand that, uh, first and foremost, that that we, even though we belong to earth, but our, our passport, we are passport holders <laughs> of heaven. You know? uh, we are citizenship is in heaven. And therefore, we are on a transit or on a visit visa over here on earth. You know, it's just a matter of time. Then when, it's like, you know, look, look, uh, we have to understand this whole concept of heaven. You know, uh, you see, look, look at, a, imagine a, a baby that is being uh, uh, in nine months in the womb of the mother. Now that as the baby grows in that, in that, in that, in that period of the nine months, what, whatever the mother goes through, the baby also goes through. The, the baby cannot see, but the baby can feel. Baby can smell, baby can hear, baby can experience what the mother, Sense. whatever the mother experience, whenever the mother goes to the washroom, the baby is there. Whenever the mother is sleeping, the baby is there. Mother is taking, to the, uh, taking a shower, the baby is there. Whatever the mother is eating, the spicy food or the sweet food, the baby experiences all of that. But, you know, but the baby can't see the mother. But after nine months, when the baby comes out, the baby sees who the mother is. It's the same way. We as Christians, we are in the womb of God. You know, this period of our, uh, our earthly life, we are in the womb of God. But at the same time, we are we are we are also in the heavens. Why? Because we are in the presence of God. Wherever God is, the heaven is there. We experience everything. We have not yet seen God, yes, but we experience Him. We see Him in the Holy Eucharist, in the in the form of body and blood, in 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 the in the Blessed Sacrament. We feel Him. We we can we can experience Him through His presence. We can hear His voice, but we don't yet see Him. But it's only a matter of time when when we are given birth, or rather, when we die and we are born into the new kingdom. When we see him face to face, then we will see him as he is. Till then, we are still in the presence of God. Like how a baby is in the presence of the mother, in the womb of the mother. We are also in the womb of God. We are in the presence of God. And therefore, we as Christians, when we live on earth, we ought to live as heavenly citizens. We ought to live as people, not storing up treasures here and there, but storing up our treasures on. Because you see, uh, for example, if you want, if, if you know that you're not going to stay in this particular place, uh, yeah. Like for example, in your one particular house, and you are going to have a, uh, rather you are going to migrate to another place, and you have your own house. You will not spend your time and energy trying to beautify, yes, the, beautify true. this house, right? Or decorating or investing in this house. But you will want to spend time. You want to want to invest your money into a place where you are going to stay for good. Exactly. You are not going to move away, shift from that place. Suppose you want to migrate to another country, and you already have a, you you will st save all that finance so that you can prepare for that place. True, true. In the same way, we as citizens of heaven ought to prepare ourselves in that way. Keep our mind fixed on heaven. So when we say our Father who art in heaven, we are reminded ourselves of our citizenship. Firstly, we are also reminded that that uh, we are not to be attached to the things of this world and to learn to be attached to the things of the heavenly. That is why Jesus said, store up your treasures in heaven where neither moth Not nor rust can enter, nor thieves can come and steal. We already spoke of this several times that there, whatever you invest over there, you're, you will always get returns. Yes. <laughs> the market never goes down over there, you know. So that is what we, so whenever we say our father who art in heaven, we are telling, we are, first of all, we are remembering that our father, we, we belong to our father's homeland. We belong to a place, our citizenship is in that place. And that is how we ought to live as Christians. That is what the Catechism teach, teaches us that, uh, that although we live in the flesh, but we uh, although we are in the flesh, but we do not live according to the flesh. the flesh. And that is what we have to be detached from, that the, the temptation of the flesh, the desires of the flesh, and be attached to the Father. They spend their lives on earth, but are citizens of heaven. And therefore, and next time when you pray, Our Father who art in heaven, you ought to remember your, your, your identity, first and foremost. Live as live as if we are living as citizens of heaven. Live as if you are, as Saint Paul would say, we are ambassadors of Christ. Yes. You know, and that is what we are called to, and this is what we have to identify as. This is what we have to learn. And when we when we are when you are finished all of this, our Father who art in heaven, then we go on to the we begin the start of petitions. Yeah. Thy kingdom True. come, thy will. And therefore, in the next class, we will see the petition. But let us uh, speak about these petitions. So, uh, the Catechism will continue to say after we have placed ourselves in the presence of God. Let me go to the paragraph 2803. After we have placed ourselves in the presence of God, our Father, to adore and to love and to bless Him, the spirit of adoption stirs up in our hearts seven petitions or seven blessings. Yes. The first three are more theological, which draws us towards the glory of the Father. The last four uh, has ways towards Him, commend our wretchedness to His grace. The first series of petition carries us towards Him for His own sake 
thy name, thy kingdom, thy will. So it is a characteristic of love to think first of the one whom we love, right? So in none of these three petitions do we mention ourselves. Very clear. The burning desire, even anguish of the beloved son for the father, father's glory seizes his. Mm. You see, the way that Jesus loved his father is the same kind of love and passion that should seize our hearts. Because even Jesus first sought his will, his kingdom to come, his name, his name be glorified, your will be done, father, uh, and uh, your, kingdom. your kingdom come here. And that should be our, the, the kind of love that we should love our father with the same passion. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So these three supplications were already answered in the saving sacrifice of Christ. But they are henceforth directed in hope towards their final fulfillment. For God is still not yet all in all. And you see this in, um, in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 28, it says, St. Paul will say, when all things are, then when all things are under his authority, the son will put himself under God's authority. So that God who gave his son authority over all things will be utterly supreme over everything everywhere. So in that, so that is what th these three, uh, we pray for these petitions, thy name, thy kingdom, thy will be done. But it has still, it has to still reach their final fulfillment when Jesus finally, God finally comes here on earth and takes us back, you know, mm -hmm. when he will, is in his second coming. Now the paragraph 2805 will speak about the second series of petitions, the next yeah, four. four. The second series of petition unfolds with the same movement as certain as certain Eucharistic epiclesis, which means it's speaking about the, the what happens when the when the priest invokes the Holy yes. Spirit upon the, the gifts yes. of bread and wine. So as an offering up of our expectations that draws down upon itself the eyes of the Father of Mercies. They go up from us and concern us from this very moment in our present world. So all these petitions concerns our, our present needs, world. Yeah. Our, 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 and we are drawing God's mercy upon the, our needs. So, so the petitions are give us, forgive us, lead us, not and deliver us. These are the four petitions. So the fourth and fifth petitions concern our life as such to be fed and to be healed of sin. And the last two concern our battle for the victory of life, that battle of prayer. Okay, so... Uh, so this is all about the, the petition and this is what we will be doing, uh, speaking about in our next class. So in the first, the first thing is to have, to build that relationship, to get our understanding right who our father is. Okay. Understand that who we, our citizenship and what he has done for us. How, when we, when we were baptized, we became citizens. We became, we, be, we are part of that, that kingdom, you know. And if we are part of that kingdom, that means we have access to every blessing. Every blessing means each and every blessing, as St. Paul would say, we have access to every blessing in the heavenly places because we are in the heavens. Remember, heaven is not about a place, yes. but it's a, it's a state of being. Okay, if, if you are disconnected from God, and if you sin, we, we sin ourselves, we are in hell. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to wait for the he hell to come. <laughs> you're already in hell. You're disconnected because you're cut away from God. But when we uh, reconcile, when we forgive, and when we are uh, one with the Father, we're already in heaven. So like I told you, it's only a matter of time that we will see the Father face to face. But we are already seated with Him in the heavenly place. Remember, we are already seated with Him. And this is something that we need to read, the chapter of Ephesians where it speaks about St. Paul speaking about our identity. You know, yeah. We did that, we, we studied yes. much in detail and we understood what is our identity. And that is what we have to uh, understand when we say, Our Father who art in heaven. And when we have uh, gotten all this right, then we begin to seek, Lord, let your kingdom come, your will be done let your name be glorified and then we go on to our own needs our own petition because we know that we live on earth so as when we are living on earth we have to ask the lord to always give us his bread to so that we sustain our life on earth we ask the lord to give forgive us as we forgive others because this is something that we will encounter on a daily basis we are always going to go through temptation so we ask the lord to lead us not into temptation and to deliver us from every evil because this is something that we go through on so till eternity till we reach eternity these are some of the things that we go on earth we are going to ask god that he's as as uh, scripture says we offer up our expectations that draws down upon that draws down upon itself the eyes of the father of mercies so whatever our needs, we are drawing God's eyes upon those needs and we are asking. So like this is the one of the perfect prayers and is the perfect sequence in how we should pray. And that, that should be the base of prayer. I mean, if you don't know, eventually you end up praying the same prayer. I mean, you you, you will not know how to pray better than to pray the Our Father the way itself, you know. Mm -hmm. All the people say that why we should repeat Our Father, why can't we say any other prayer? I mean, 
tell me any other prayer that is more perfect than this prayer because all the prayer it's a prayer of Jesus himself and whatever you pray has to uh, what do you call surround around this prayer only it has to have the it has to be glorifying the father and calling his name because there is no other prayer than this perfect than this prayer so this is something that we need to but the, the but the, the thing is why we people today pray so mechanically that we do not know what we are praying and then we have lost the sense of knowing who our father is knowing who the children whom god has given us knowing that we belong to a heavenly place and we are thinking of heaven as a space and we need to grow, spiritually mature in this understanding and grow in our relationship and something that i think we will st- uh, one of the th- online retreats that we'll be soon yes. having and is where we'll be practicing the presence of god yes. all of you have heard about this online retreat that anil is going to be soon conducting from the 1st of july is it uh yes from the 1st of july so too. look forward to that and there we speak about how do you practice the presence of god how you are one to one with the father you know and and that and when you are one to one with father you are in the heavens yes you are already in heavens in fact i want to invite our viewers who are based here in the uae to attend our uh, prayer meeting on wednesday which is tomorrow at 8 o'clock in st francis of assisi church in jabal ali where in brother is going to do a little uh, prelude to the actual retreat you know the talk is based on the practicing the presence of god and uh, it may it may be good to attend that and then you know be prepared for uh, the retreat which begins it's an online retreat and if you are interested in joining this retreat do write in to us and we'll tell you how you can be part of it it's a, you will receive the um, uh, the message uh, by uh, via whatsapp every morning uh, one correction the prayer meeting is this evening today is wednesday right today is ah yeah 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 sorry uh, forgive me Uh, pardon me it's today uh, wednesday at 8 pm in uh, jabalali church thanks thanks <laughs> all right see you all ha- uh, so i hope and pray that you meditate on this do not uh, understand go to the catechism catechism church and read this now uh, since i've read this i'm sure you must have got a taste to now read the you should have, you should de- you should you should i mean when i started reading this i've developed that taste to read the word of god i mean to understand the word of god through the eyes of the church mother church teaching us who our father is you know and i'm sure now after you read this you you can you would want to meditate on those words you know in the catechism catholic church because scripture words quotations are there so grow in your relation with the father understand who your father is understand your citizenship understand that you do not belong to this place understand that you have to spend uh, invest your time and efforts into that heavenly kingdom and know that heaven is not about a place or space but it's a, it's a state of your being if you are with god you're already in the heavens i told you just a matter of time and you just have to persevere in this uh, pilgrimage on the wilderness and another thing which i liked uh, when you explain so well glen about our father in heaven about how when we say our we are including entire humanity and very often i'm uh, you know we have so many people even non christians uh, people who we interact with who ask for prayers and sometimes we really don't know what to pray and even say, saying the our father now is uniting them into god's family and why won't god you know uh, uh, rain blessings upon Correct. them yeah. so that's a beautiful prayer to pray even with non christians so thank you glen for uh, thanks, your yeah. wonderful insights and thanks to our viewers we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow